Welcome to Willow Springs News. I'm Raiden Wiss. And I'm Margaret Mealhouse. This is Ms. Rivera's fifth period class, and WSNS News starts now! It's crazy to think we have already finished one month of school. The first week started off with three straight days of rain causing traffic accidents, bus issues, and carpool confusion. Construction crews worked tirelessly to put the finishing touches on the new turf, forcing athletes to practice in drenched, muddy fields. Coaches made sure athletes didn't get injured. Many athletes fail a new concussion test. We take a look at the changes. We are back to eight classes a day, 40% new staff, and many teachers dealing with 30-plus students. Not to mention COVID cases rising all over the state and our district. But leopards are tough, fighting through, coming out ahead. We've got the update on the fall musical Cinderella, volleyball, football, and cross country. Our first school social in two years and the return to club day today. All this and more coming up on WSMS News. Welcome back. This is Willow Springs News. 7th and 8th graders returned to Willow Springs on Monday, August 16th. The school year was set into motion with some strange events that took place in the first few days of school. On the first day, it started to rain during the second half of 8th period. By the time dismissal began, it was pouring in lightning. 8th grade science teacher Mrs. Perez says she hasn't seen any first day like this in all her years of teaching. Many students waited inside until they saw their car, but teachers like Mrs. Bellows, Mr. Parker, and Mrs. Perez were tasked with running carpool in the storm unfortunately causing them to get drenched. In addition to the carpool fiasco, many buses were late. People had to be put on random buses, causing some students to get as home as late as 5.30. If, as if this couldn't get crazier, it started to rain on the second day at the same time. With that rain came multiple traffic accidents. Here's Caitlin Miller and Pablo Duran with the story. The first week of school for Lovejoy was chaotic. Due to the rain, the roads were slippery, which caused more crashes than normal. There were three crashes in less than four days. On Monday, August 16th, the first day of school, media teacher Miss Smith got into an accident after school as she was trying to get to the high school to pick up her daughter. All of a sudden, when I was turning left, the cars slowed down immediately because of the line trying to get into the high school. Miss Smith said she tried calling 911 several times. I tried to text my husband. I tried to text my daughter Chloe, who was at the high school. I tried to, and I didn't have any service. 20 minutes later, a sheriff finally arrived to the scene. And the sheriff came and they said they thought that one of the towers had been hit by lightning. Rain, especially after no days of rain, makes the roads really dangerous. The rain and the oil mix together and makes the road really slippery. Sadly, the next day, there was a fatal accident that killed a 16-year-old girl from Allen High School. Police say the child's mom was driving on Allen Heights in exchange in a Nissan Altima when an 18-wheeler struck their car. On August 18th, after the third day of heavy rain, there was a head-on collision on Country Club Road in front of Allen Pediatrics. Robotics teacher Miss Woods was a first responder to help people in the crash. I was stopped on the road behind another vehicle, letting traffic by, I guess. And I looked up in my rearview mirror, and this truck was coming really fast. And I thought they were going to hit me, but at the last second, they swerved to the left of me. And the next thing I know, the truck was in front of me, but I could see them crash into each other in front of me. Both drivers survived and are in stable conditions. Miss Wood says that the way cars are engineered today is one of the reasons people can survive head-on collisions. When I was young, if there had been a head-on collision like that, where two cars were moving at that speed and crunched into each other head-on, the motors would have been pushed into the car. A lot of times people would be pinned in the car by the dashboard and they would have to come and saw them out of the car because that motor just came in on top of them. But now, due to great engineering, the cabs of these vehicles are reinforced 
and the fronts or the backs of the vehicles are made to crumple easily so that when they crash, all of that velocity, that momentum is taken on by the front engine, but then when it hits the cab, the cab is reinforced. Officers say motorists should drive even slower and always wear your seatbelt. That was an engineering feat that saved two lives right in front of me. For WSMS News, I'm Caitlin Miller. And I'm Pablo Duran. The weather can certainly affect so much of what we do. The 2021-2022 school year is off to a strange start due to the unusual weather. Even so, Willow Springs is making it work, showing that we can handle whatever. It certainly can. The weather has been very unstable with a very active hurricane season. Hurricane Nicholas wrecks havoc as it makes landfall Tuesday morning on the Texas coast, leaving thousands in the dark. Here's Holt Whitfield with the latest on Nicholas and the local forecast. Holt. In the Gulf of Mexico, Hurricane Nicholas moved along the coast, bringing heavy rain. It became a Category 1 hurricane just before making landfall, making its way through Louisiana before slowing down. It caused heavy showers in the surrounding areas, resulting in a lot of flash flood warnings. Moving on to local weather, we had a sunny week with low rain chances. Today, we'll have 90 degree weather with a 10% chance of rain. This weekend, we'll have temperatures in the low 90s and a very low chance of rain. Back to you guys. Thanks guys, it's homecoming tonight, and our Leopard athletes have been working hard to bring wins in both volleyball and football. Are you going to the game tonight? Yes, I can't wait. Our athletes here at school have had a bunch of obstacles to fight through, like not being able to practice on the field and a new concussion protocol. Yeah, that was really hard for a lot of kids. We take a look. This year, WSMS decided to use a new platform for concussion testing called Sway. The Sway Concussion Test is an app that uses a variety of tests to determine students' abilities to balance, and it measures one's cognitive ability. In addition, the app can also be used to track symptoms. So the Sway Test is basically the concussion test for how we're going to determine if a athlete has a concussion or not. But what it does is it gets the balance more, so when you have a concussion, your balance can be thrown off. So the sway actually does get your balance factor in that this year. The sway test starts out by having you click on any symptoms you have. The test then measures your balance in various ways, such as having you balance on one foot and placing one foot in front of the other while closing your eyes. The test then moves on to other various activities in which you demonstrate your ability to focus. I don't think the sway test was hard, but we did it mobily, so it was all about balancing the phone and making sure you don't fail a test by accident. Taking a concussion test for all people in athletics is a standard practice. However, people without a concussion failing the test is not. More people than ever have failed the test this year. Why? So more kids failed just because of them having a harder platform to use. So they had to do a lot more testing and it was a lot more rigorous and they had to stand with their phones in their hands and balance correctly. And so that if they moved too much, it caused them to fail. I know there was a lot of retaking it because we're all trying to focus, but with so many girls around each other at the same time, trying to keep their balance and keep the phone from moving while everyone's moving around, it was challenging. So with the sway test, it is broken up into sections. So if they just failed one section, all they have to do is just redo that section and then they're able to complete it. All students participating in athletics are required to take the test at the beginning of the school year. In the event of a suspected concussion, students will take the concussion test again. The results of the test after suspected concussion will then be compared to the original test results. So we would check to see if they have a concussion, and if they do, then they either need to stay in the sport or they need to go see a doctor while they're in the sport. Um, but if they do have a concussion and the doctor says no, then they will be um, out of athletics, unfortunately. For WSMS News, I'm Reagan Wiss. And I'm Margaret Mealhouse. For a look at the rest of sports, here's the sports crew with Max Willard and Conrad Hayes. Guys? Eighth grade volleyball teams all won against Rockwall Kane without having to play a third set. We have exciting footage of the game, which was the eighth grader's first time at home. Okay. I'm Anna Lisa Levine here with Lady Pierce and Grace Gonzalez. How is it to win your first home game? Um, it felt really good. so much and I'm so excited for this season. Let's go Leopard. Our seventh graders won as well. 
with C team being forced to play a third set with a must-have domination. Last week, all 7th grade and 8th grade football teams had shutouts against Wiley McMillan. Unfortunately, we had some difficulty against Rockwall Kane. 8th grade black and red was not able to score against the Kane defense. here at Julian Mayfield. Julian, how do you think you did tonight? I did pretty good. I had some good runs and some good throws. How do you think the team did? To, like, how do you think they worked together? Uh, they did okay, but we have, to, we have to get more practice outside of school and work harder in school. I'm here with Logan Coy. Logan, how do you think you did tonight? I think I did pretty good on defense. How do you think the team could improve for your next game? Um, we could uh, improve our blocking on the O-line. Thank you. Seventh graders Black lost a close one, 20 to 28. Red pulled out with an easy win with a score of 27 to 8. Next week, we play Burnett at LHS Stadium. Make sure and pack the stands to cheer them on. Seventh grade will be away. Our Willow Springs Middle School athletes have been preparing for their new season, running into obstacles like not being able to practice on the new turf. The old turf was uh, getting, it was losing its uh, sponginess. So uh, it was getting to where it was really hard when you fell on it and it was, you were more susceptible to injury. So it was time to replace. Let's switch gears here and talk about how COVID is affecting our district. Currently, we have around 40 cases, cases and dozens of recoveries in Lovejoy. The district has changed a few things since the start of the school year. Here's Effie Sutton and Ashton Sott with headline news. A religious political movement called the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani fled the country on August 15th. The United States originally predicted it would take weeks for the civilian government in Kabul to fall, but it only took a matter of days. After a costly war lasting over two decades, the U.S. military has fully withdrawn from the country, leaving us to watch from the sidelines as the Taliban begins leaving Afghanistan. The COVID-19 pandemic is still on the rise. At this time, Willow Springs Middle School has six active student cases and two active staff cases. Though face masks are not required, they are strongly recommended for anyone who enters the school. Those who have a positive case need to contact the principal or nurse and quarantine 10 days after first symptoms appear. Plano Independent School District recently passed a temporary mask mandate with the opportunity to opt out of the new rule. The mandate gives religious, medical, philosophical, and other exemptions to anyone who chooses. Our school district is experiencing a shortage of bus drivers, causing the morning and afternoon buses to drop off students later than usual. Here is Lauren Gonzalez and Berkeley Mosel with the story. On Monday afternoon, students were ready to go home and finish their first day of school. When traffic from parents picking up students from the car line made buses arrive home a lot later than expected. I got home at 540 and my dad was already home. My mom and dad were freaking out, like trying to call the There's transportation people, probably 30 people on my bus. But we had to like get to the high school first because my bus didn't pick me up at Willow Springs. Only four buses arrived at school, so bus riders were forced to cram on them. The buses were so crammed that students had to sit in the aisles and sit four to a seat. There were two people to one seat on the ride to the high school. We sat in the cafeteria kind of waiting. Um, I sadly did not have a phone. It broke, so I, I had no way to communicate with my parents. It kind of stinks, not going to lie. Sitting in the cafeteria was boring just because you don't have anything to do. Um, luckily, I had friends in there to be able to talk to, which was actually really nice. But it was sad because my mom was worried. Well, it was raining, so they made us all go to the cafeteria, and we just kind of sat in there and waited for them. Um, I get off at the high school, so and I got there around 5 o'clock. I just waited. Whenever they told us to the cafeteria, we waited. We played cards, and we just talked. The next two weeks have been more smooth with easier traffic flow around Lovejoy ISD. I'm Berkeley Mosel. And I'm Lauren Gonzalez. When we come back, we talk about the new Cinderella musical, Club Day, our first school social, and much more. But first, a commercial break. As of August 24th, all Starbucks locations have brought back pumpkin-flavored drinks. Every year, everyone that lives in the South is just about done with the heat and ready for sweater weather. 
One way this shows is by how many people fell back in love with fall drinks. Pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin cream, cold brew, and new apple crisp macchiato. Hi, I'm Addie McCafferty here with Annie Levine, and what is your go-to Starbucks fall order? My go-to Starbucks fall order is a pumpkin spice frappuccino and um, a pumpkin loaf. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with McKenna, and what is your go-to fall order from Starbucks? My go-to fall order is probably like a pumpkin spice frappuccino and like a pumpkin scone. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Travis and Bobby, and what is y'all's go-to fall orders from Starbucks? I get a cake pop. Cake pop. The Cinderella Ensemble is dropping like flies. We've lost about 10 people, and we only started with about 15. We still need people to play horses and mice. If you are interested in joining, please contact Mrs. Knowles by emailing her or by going to the theater room, which is across from the cafeteria. We need everyone we can get to make this show a success. Welcome, welcome. I am glad to have you on the first rendition of The Rotten Tomato. Today I'll be covering the newest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU for short, Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. This is the first movie in the MCU to feature an Asian American protagonist and to have a heavier focus on Eastern Asian culture. Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings has some incredible actors such as Simu Liu, Shang-Chi, and Nora Lum as the comedic companion. And I mean, I would say that their performance alone is enough to see this movie. But along with that, there's some fantastic graphics, action-packed scenes, and more, all included in this fantastic film. Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings has a runtime about, of about 2 hours and 12 minutes, making this movie on the longer side of the MCU, but this movie isn't perfect. It has its flaws, just like any. It tends to lead more towards comedy when it's unneeded and sometimes feels rather forced. However, I mean, this is a small complaint in the great overall piece of media. Glad I was right. You're just a criminal. I would say that this movie is about ten, 8 rings out of 10. I'm Trevor Mulroney from The Rotten Tomato, signing out. Good morning, I'm Katie Payne. And I'm Zeta Warner. We're excited to bring you up to date on what is happening in our school district and especially our school. So far, we've overcome a lot of obstacles and are on our way to a very successful year. Yes. We have a lot of our firsts in the next couple of weeks that we were never able to do in nearly two years because of COVID-19. We should all be signed up for a club today. Classes are only 38 minutes long, and club day will follow fifth period. The purpose of club day is to get connected and have a break from learning, which we all need. The eight-day class schedule replaced the block schedule, and many students are feeling the changes. Last Monday, NJHS had their introduction ceremony. Congrats to those students. We will keep you updated on when you have the meetings. We got you covered. If you didn't get your class picture, there is a retake on September 29th. Today is homecoming and there is still a chance to get a blackout t-shirt. This year we have a ton of new cool t-shirts. The supply was low for the past two years due to COVID. The homecoming game is tonight against Denison. It should be a great time to not only see our number three ranked football team, but also a chance to see our band, color guard, cheerleaders, and Majestics put on a great halftime show and the results of the king and queen. I'm excited. I'm in Color Guard and I can't wait to see the show. So we have a couple more exciting events to announce. Our first pep rally since 2019 is October 21st. We will be able to see our cheerleaders, choir, band, orchestra, and Color Guard perform too. Yeah, many of us have never even experienced a pep rally before, so it should be a great time. We also are having our first back to school social and dance next Friday night, September 24th. Here are the details. Tickets are now on sale for the WSMS Fall Back to School Social and Dance, which is next Friday, September 24th. Doors open at 6 and close at 8. We will have a DJ and music in the cafeteria, as well as basketball and volleyball in both gyms. Tickets can be purchased online for $8 up until Thursday, September 23rd at 10 p.m. Tickets will be $10 on the day of the dance. And lastly, our pals are hosting a peanut butter food drive. Be sure to drop off your plastic dry peanut butter by September 30th. Make sure to drop it off by the rotunda. You can bring creamy or crunchy. We will have fall break October 8th through 11th. Things are going fast. And don't forget, the Cinderella performance is the last weekend of October at Lovejoy High School. We'll bring the details next week.
We are so excited to finally bring you the school announcements. We want to make sure we bring you the latest updates on what is happening in our school and the district. Yes, and we are working on updating our social media accounts so you can participate and help us with the story ideas and help us out with pictures and videos to share. We will let you guys know next week on how to follow us. But until then, have a good day. And remember, Leopard's Roar is one. Oh.